So just one of these ten who was healed comes back and thanks Jesus. Maybe the others didn't realize they were healed, or maybe they realized it but thought, well, I better follow Jesus' instructions and go to the priests. But they should have realized it if they didn't, right? And, and why not go back to Jesus? At least that's Jesus' take on this. He thanked Jesus, and he thanked him in a loud voice. They'd ask Jesus for healing in a loud voice. Why not go back and thank him in a loud voice too? One way to at least figuratively thank God in a lo- and in a loud voice is to um, keep track of our prayers that are answered, maybe in a gratitude journal. Maybe some of you um, keep a gratitude journal or have done that. Um, I, one year I did that in a dark year for me, and it was really transforming. It was really helpful. Um, it occurred to me, I could, I could um, write down what I'm praying for too, and then to keep track, you know, because we sometimes forget what we've prayed for, right? And it's answered, we don't realize it, we don't forgot that we prayed for it. And so um, I decided to do a little trial, ask, thank journal this week. Um, and I, I, so I wrote down three things, and I even, three things, and I even got specific and asked that they, maybe you're not supposed to do this, but I asked that they be answered in time for my preaching today. <laughs> so that I could um, share the good news with you. Well, um, two out of three, unless um, the federal government shutdown has ended. No? Okay, too bad. Um, But my other two prayers uh, were answered, and I'll keep praying that third prayer. My um, one prayer was about needing direction in some personal challenge I'm having, and I felt like that happened on... Friday, the other prayer was, um, and I I was trying to get kind of specific, and so I um, prayed that my father would come home from the hospital, and I wrote this prayer down on Wednesday, and really, to our amazement in my family, he was home the next day. What happened, um, he went to the emergency room last Sunday, he was confused, um, and his legs weren't working. And it sounded to me like a stroke, what do I know? And, um, but it turned out he needed dialysis, so they started him on dialysis. But even before that, um, the confusion cleared up, and um, it was good news that they figured this out and that he's finally starting dialysis because I found out that he, his doctor told him a month ago he should start it. And, um, but I was able to note, because I would have kind of forgotten or actually that I prayed this, maybe, and wouldn't have thought to thank God, or sometimes, actually, I don't even think to ask God specifically. Um, Probably most of you um, do that more um, regularly than I do. So it was a nice chance to really ask and then really notice and really thank. Um, Of course, you know, sometimes um, we pray and we pray and we pray, and um, there isn't the answer, or there isn't the answer we want, or we if there's an answer, it's confusing, um, and it's hard really to address that, isn't it, except that we know God does hear us, that God wants everything for us, and um, I suppose we can thank God for that, and thank God for the opportunity to pray and to keep praying. And in the end, though, I think this gospel story isn't so much about God answering our prayers and God healing us. You know, it seems like it's almost utilitarian in a way, the way Jesus sort of uses these things for something bigger. And we might think, well, isn't it about our healing? Isn't that what it's about? But Jesus is always wanting to point towards God. And, um, and this is about our relationship with God. The, these lepers, in sending him to the priests, was about restoring their relationship with the, with 
the temple, with the synagogue, with the community, with the community of faith, with God, because these lepers had to stand at a distance from everything, from everybody. And they weren't a part of the community life. They weren't a part of the church's worship life, the, the, rather the synagogue's worship life. And this was restoration to community and to a fuller relationship, a fuller expression of that relationship with God. Did you notice that when this one leper, Samaritan, by the way, right, um, an outsider, comes and thanks Jesus, he not only thanks him in a loud voice, but he falls at Jesus' feet. There's no distance anymore. He's right there with Jesus. And Jesus is God right there with us in the flesh. And he falls right there at Jesus' feet. And these are the feet that are on their way to Jerusalem where Jesus is giving his whole life ultimately so that we might be restored in relationship with God. One way to thank God out loud is to sing it. And so Julie and I want to do that for you now. Well, she's going to play. I'm going to 